Welcome along to Ballers and our WSL show. I'm Michelle Owen and I'm joined by three amazing women today. Sam, Sam, Samantha Miller, who's uh, been here for the last few weeks. She knows what she's doing. Experts, ex West Ham and now a brilliant broadcaster for so many different places. She's here, she's there, she's everywhere. She's with us this afternoon. And a big welcome to Gemma Purfield, Bristol City and England Youth International and Kyla Showman, who we've been joined with before. It's great to see you as well, Kyla. And um, welcome along, everyone. What we like to do at the start is some quick fire questions. Me and Sam love this. So we smash through them, Gemma and Kyla, and you give us your quick fire answers. And uh, then in just a little while, we're going to be talking about the international break uh, especially Gemma we want to talk to you um, about I know it's it's an uh, aspiration of yours the senior setup what's been going on no game in the international break and we're going to talk about Wales as well they came so close but couldn't quite do it and what does it mean maybe for the older players and then after the break we'll be talking about the WSL which is back this weekend we've missed it and also we'll be um, touching on the championship as well because um, Fionn Morgan has been talking to us about that so all of that to come let's start with these quick fire questions Uh, Gemma, Kyla, Sam's going to pick who goes first so let's go for it Sam. Okay, Gemma, we'll start with you. Who is your football inspiration? Uh, from men's side, I would say David Beckham when I was growing up. And from the women's, Rachel Yankee. Nice. No, that's two good answers. Um, Kyla, which, I know you're getting into your coaching, which we're going to come on to in just a little while. So which manager would you love to work for? Um, I guess maybe as a player and with, as a coach, perhaps, as well. You can give two answers. Um, as a player, I think... I've always loved Jurgen Klopp. Like when I was in Germany and he was at Dortmund, I just like, he has so much enthusiasm in his club. His teams always do so well. So I'd probably say him. Um, And then coach with, I'd have to think about that, honestly. I mean, Jill Ellis is obviously inspirational and done amazing. So that'd be someone to learn a ton from. So I, I guess I would say her. Gemma. The best goal you've ever scored. I have a feeling we might see this one today. At the <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It was similar to that, um, but it was probably, I was only about 14, but it was on my England debut for England under 15s. And I used to be a, a centre forward back then. So I was a bit higher up. But yeah, I scored on my debut and it was a bit similar and loved the keeper. So I think that one. <laughs> you've gone backwards, Gemma. It's more fun up front. Mm-hmm. And uh, Kyla, what's your record for keepy uppies? How many can you do? Honestly, I don't, I don't know. I stopped keeping track. I think when I was like 12 or 13, after you get to that 100, 100 mark, you just like can't count anymore. So I can tell you, honestly. We had um, a freestyler on the other week. Well, I can't remember what the answer was, but it was, it was thousands, wasn't it, Sam? It was something ridiculous. Jeez. It was very high. Yeah, I've never counted. <laughs> I wouldn't even know what to say if someone asked me. I might, might have to practice that. In the I have to make it up. Make yourself look good, make it up. <laughs> Costa or Starbucks? Are you a big coffee drinker? It's got to be Starbucks. I don't know if that's because I spent so much time in America and they don't have Costa over there. They only have Starbucks. So probably because of that. But yeah, Starbucks, definitely. Uh, Carla, Messi or Ronaldo? Uh, Messi, yeah. Why? I just love him as a player, I think. And hopefully we'll see him. In, in the Premier League sometime soon, but um, we'll see. But yeah, no, I just, I, I've always loved Messi, so. Chocolate or penny sweets? I think I'd go penny sweets, actually. I love the little fizzy penny sweets, so yeah, I think that'd do it just over chocolate for me. What is um, a penny sweet, real quick? Yeah, a penny sweet? Oh, Sam, explain. Explain about pick and mix. <laughs> I'm like the worst person because I'm all chocolate. Like, I very rarely eat <laughs> But oh, is it just your pick a mix? Just all the different yeah, um, pick mixes, right? You do yeah, all the bread. Yeah. Yeah, 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 no pick and mix. <laughs> I've never heard a penny sweet before. I was like, what is that? But um, okay. that, you know what? Like, you can tell our producer, who no offense to Alex, is a little bit older than us, has written that because <laughs> I haven't heard penny sweets used for a long time. But it's like when they used to be in the jars on the shelves, didn't they? Which wasn't even in our childhood. So yeah, we'll move on from that. And um, finally, top bins or in off the bar for both of you? Top bins, Kyla. Yeah, probably top bins. I take anything. I'm not a goal scorer, so. <laughs> <I'll take anything. laughs> oh, brilliant. Okay, so um, let's talk about the international break then. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's 
feels like it's been a, a little while um, since the WSL was in action and had a couple of weeks off for the international break. But England, uh, the Lionesses had the inter-squad game, didn't they, Gemma? I just wondered, like, are you in, are you in touch with um, many of the senior squad from the people you play with and, and fellow players in the WSL? And how was that for them? And, and what were your thoughts on that? Because it's a long time to go without an international, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, some of the girls there um, I've played with along the way and I think they're just enjoying obviously learning, especially a lot of the younger girls who are, are the ones I predominantly know. Um, they're just enjoying being in that environment, I think, and a lot of them are stepping up for the first time. So I think they learn a lot whether they're training or playing. But of course, I think they're all probably chasing that first England cap as well, which should, you know, be good for them to get. So yeah, I think it's tough, but I think it's tough for everyone right now. So they're probably just happy that they're allowed to play, they're allowed to be in the environment uh, and they can learn and, and train against each other and one of the best teams in the world for a reason. So to play against each other isn't isn't too bad either. At least they're still getting tested and playing against some of the best players in the world, uh, even when they're on camp, even if that's not playing someone like Germany or in the She Believes Cup. How different is it mentally when you're sort of going into a camp when you've got something to really focus on, maybe a major tournament, uh, in comparison to just sort of going and, and just training? Yeah, it's a completely different mindset. I think you go with a bit more of a, an open mindset to just a training camp because you you know you're going to learn, you're going to try and get better and, and to kind of implement your place in that squad. Whereas um, when it comes to a fixture camp, you're focused on playing and winning and, and that's kind of it. So I think, um, yeah, they are different mindsets, both enjoyable environments to be in though. And um, I think the girls will just thrive from the extra time and then hopefully when it does come, that they get an international fixture, they'll be able to perform because they've had so much time together to work on what they need to work on. But Kyla, not I guess not playing competitively, you know, no game since the She Believes Cup in March. Do you lose some momentum, I suppose? Um, because you don't know how you're going to perform. You can't measure yourself against other countries. And it must have been frustrating as well for the players to watch other internationals going on too. Yeah, I can imagine it's super frustrating, especially when they're all so close and a lot of them are playing in the English league to be able to actually like get together and keep that kind of rhythm and momentum going. That's got to be really frustrating to then not challenge themselves and be playing against other internationals. Um, but yeah, and I think I think it is really important, those matches and getting together and uniting because you're coming from your different clubs and just to keep that rhythm going into major tournaments like olympics euros and everything so yeah and uh, wales did get to play didn't they um we had um natasha harding on on our last show um they they knew it was pretty much mission, mission impossible and unfortunately for them northern ireland uh, pipped them to it i mean god it's, it's absolutely heartbreaking when that happens and i know a few of the older players and i mean that in the nicest way older in the terms of context of football not old at all but you know helen ward tasha the others maybe you know that was one of their last opportunities and it's pretty pretty tough to take isn't it yeah definitely I can imagine it's, it's sort of just just a really gutting feeling because I think they had a lot of confidence that they were going to qualify and then sort of it gets down to it and you just miss out it's yeah you can't really imagine it I mean someone's dog has got a very strong opinion on this yeah. Come on. Whose my, dog is it? It's my dog. He anyone that walks past the house, he just he has his moment. It's a bit mad for a while. So yeah. He's angry. Maybe he's half Welsh. Um let's just have a look at a goal that um Natasha Harding scored uh, the other week, which we absolutely um loved. Oh, I think is this the uh, this might be the goal from uh the Wales game actually, which Alex is gonna play for us now, our producer, so we can have a little look at this majority of us especially the older ones probably made peace with it after the Norway game a few of us were upset because um, we knew that you know it was kind of in other people's hands which is disappointing but we have you know we had discussions and tonight was about the next two years and it, you know we either look at it and dwell on it and, and feel sorry for ourselves or we put in a performance score some goals and, and use our you know to leapfrog you know into next year really yeah I mean they, they knew they couldn't really do much more than win and just hope on uh, what evening was that? Was it Tuesday evening? Um, but yeah, really disappointing for them. Do you think, Kyla, that the likes of Tasha Harding, Helen Ward, those experienced heads in the Wales squad, do you think they'll 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 stick around and, and 
be up for the next campaign? Because they're real leaders, aren't they, for that squad? Yeah, I hope so. I think, like you said, their their leadership and experience. And I mean, Wales is just on the cusp of, and same with Northern Ireland, like they have these great talented players and it's so competitive and should get into these major tournaments. Um, but I think it's the leaders that's driving them through. So I really, really hope they stick around. Yeah, it's quite amazing for, for Northern Ireland, actually, who pipped them. They didn't even enter a women's team into qualifying um, a few years ago. And, and now they're, they're getting in. So big moment for them. Some amazing stuff on social media. Did you see much of that, Gemma? And do you know many of the players? Yeah, I think um, it was all over social media. And rightly so. They've, they've done absolutely amazing. And um, I played with Rachel Furness at uh, Liverpool. And she's outstanding. She's I think obviously a big part of their success. She scores goals, she assists, and and when you're in a team with her, you can tell that she's got that leadership, winning mentality, and and I think that's really important for them. Um, so I'm I'm no doubt the girls in that team will agree that she's helped them and pushed them on, and it's obviously been a team effort. There's been some great performances for them, and they've got plenty of fantastic players. But uh, she for me is a standout, and um, she always has been. Uh, and Jim, I actually, I just wondered, have you spoken to many of the girls um, at Bristol City? There's a lot of Welsh players there. Um, what, what's their reaction? How are they feeling? Yeah, of course, they're absolutely good. Um, they were going to be because they've got such a great team. And, and I think they did believe they could get there. But uh, yeah, they're good. I think they kind of came to terms that a bit like Tash said in her interview there. They came to terms that maybe last time they knew mm. the lying on, you know, Far Islands wasn't probably going to be the biggest hope. So I think they knew it was going to be tough and they were gutted, but they got they got on with that, moved on quickly and uh, focused on the next. And I think they'll all turn their focus now back to club football and domestic football, which will, you know, help them reset and, and go again. Yeah, and Sam, um, Scotland missed out as well. Did you think they had a chance this time? I mean, it was it was such a cruel way uh, with the, the last minute goal. And, you know, you, you could see by the likes of Erin Cuthbert's reaction how hurtful that was and I think everyone would have expected out of all of those sides yeah. than to be the team to do it um, mm. after the World Cup campaign and I think it was a real shock to the system actually for the players themselves and um, you just look at the talent they have in that squad the likes of Kim Little they had Jennifer Beatty back and um, Martha Thomas just uh, joining up with Scotland and um, yeah like I said the likes of Erin Cuthbert as well so a real shock there. Yeah, it's a, it was horrible, wasn't it? That last minute goal. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's gone now, I guess. And it's probably even more raw for the Scotland players going back to their clubs. But that is what they are all doing if they're in the WSL. Because coming up, we're going to have a look at the key games uh, coming up in the WSL over the weekend. And also, uh, we're going to have a look at uh, the full programme uh, in the whole league. And we're going to touch on the Championship too. Uh, you can find us on YouTube, on our Facebook channels. Um, we are still here and we'll be back in just a moment. Oh, and we're back. Hello and welcome to Ballers, the home of women's football across England, Wales and Scotland. When I play football, I don't feel different from everybody else. When I got into Arsenal, we were very, very happy because now we both played for Arsenal. Like We always dreamed of us both playing for Arsenal in the same team. That didn't quite happen, but at least we both played for Arsenal. Going and being in a different place has pushed me to be more social, and I think in turn has, yes, built confidence, for sure. Okay, welcome back to Ballers. This is our WSL show. I've got Gemma Purfield from Bristol City and England Youth. We've got Kyla Showman, who's played all over and is now um, in a top job coaching all across the world, hopefully, if COVID permits. And um, we'll come on to that in just a bit, Kyla. And uh, Sam, my co-host, ex-Spurs, ex-West Ham. And we are chatting now, everything um, WSL. And before we do that, we've got a couple of questions in. Uh, one here. Um, for both of you, let's do both of you. Um, want to know what your favourite moment in football that you either seen or played, and the best player that you've ever played with. I mean, that's a great name, by the way, from the question holder as well. But, um, <laughs> we don't need to say that. Uh, go on, Gemma, you go first. Um, I think 
favourite moment for me playing wise was captain in my country um, for England youth team. I think coming out with an England shirt on anyway is such an honour, but to captain them was massive and yeah, gives you goosebumps just thinking about it. So that's probably my favourite moment in football. Um, what was the other question? Sorry, in football. No, it was a choice. So what, well, what journal played? But I mean, come on, like representing your country has to be the peak. And and Carla, what about you? Um, probably it would be a Champions League quarterfinal against Bayern Munich. I know I talked about it last time, but uh, it was just such a phenomenal game. We tied them at home in front of like a record crowd in the Czech Republic. So uh, that was really special. And the ultras were just incredible at that game. Um, so yeah, that was definitely my highlight of my career, I'd say. I'd say. Was that the game where, I'm not sure if it, was, it might have been that one, where Svit, Svitkova, who's now at West Ham, scored that unbelievable goal against Innsberger? Yeah, absolute worldy. I think there was probably like 15 minutes left in the game. And yeah, it was on her birthday and it was just like this perfect, beautiful moment. Um, and she couldn't even really celebrate the next day because she had to go to school. But uh, <laughs> <That's> amazing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Kyla, um, just, just to finish on those couple of questions, one of them was the best play you've ever played with as well. Um, yeah, I'd probably have to say Christine Sinclair. Yeah. Um, all-time leading goal scorer. She's absolutely incredible on and off the pitch, just like an incredible person, leader on the pitch. Uh, just watching her play is, is incredible. But to play alongside her was was pretty, pretty amazing. So that was awesome. Amazing. Well, um, let's move on to the WSL now. Uh, we can have a look at the fixtures that are happening this weekend. And uh, we've got Aston Villa against Manchester United, which is uh, the early kickoff tomorrow on Saturday. And then Chelsea West Ham, Arsenal play Birmingham City, which Sam is going to be at. So we'll have a good chat about that. Reading v Bristol City, Gemma's team, Spurs host Brighton and Everton play Manchester City. Let's start with Bristol City then, Gemma, as you're here with us. Um, Congratulations on getting a goal in, in the Continental Cup. Uh, let's let's just have a little look at this moment and you can talk us through it as well. Yeah, that's a very, very good strike and that's exactly what she can do. A uh, bit too much space on the edge of the box there. It's my first goal for the club and, and that's special but more importantly the team got the job done tonight. Ebony scored a fantastic goal and Emma scored a great goal too and, and we're a team so we won tonight and, and that's the main focus. Great celebration, Gemma. Uh, first goal for the club. <laughs> C- congratulations against Lewis Lewis, how do you say, in the, um, in the Continental Cup. Uh, great moment for you. Maybe you should have stuck to playing up front because that was a hell of a hit. <laughs> yeah, I think I uh, kind of intercepted the pass and the space opened up in front of me. And so um, I do like going forward. I have been an attacking player, so I think that's one of my strengths. So, yeah, just sort of touching space. It opened up for me and thought I'd hit it. And thankfully it went in. <laughs> Sam and I, were, we, we were so impressed with your result against Spurs, weren't we, Sam? Sam's old club. And we talked about it a lot uh, in the last episode. So how's the mood after that and the confidence going into this game against Reading? Yeah, I think um, we needed that because we've been, we had had a decent game against them and the performance was was there. Um, we considered two set pieces, so we'd kept it minimal from open play. And um, I think we then wanted to capitalise on that. So it was we were all... Um, you know, so happy to get the, the equaliser right at the end. And we do think we deserved it. Um, we're a little bit gutted that the break came up when it did because we had that lose game. And it'd been nice to, you know, carry on and, and carry that momentum with us. But um, we've got four massive games now before the Christmas break. Um, and, yeah, I think they're all ones that we've got, we've got points to take. And so we're excited about it. Yeah, let's just have a look at Tash Harding here talking about Reading season so far and how they're refocusing after international duty. No, look, we got a couple of days off now, regroup, spend some time with our family um, and then back in on Friday, prepare for the game on Sunday and then it's three games back to back and off for Christmas. So, yeah, no, it's, you know, it's, it's football, it's, it's the job that we all love. Um, it's just, it would, I would have loved to be going back on a high, but it is what it is and 
you know, I'm back focus on club now uh, come Friday. We want to continue climbing up the table. It's a mixed bag this year. Um, so if we can continue to, to get points and, and clean sheets and score some goals, hopefully now we'll see ourselves, you know, hopefully get on the run. It's, it's really close. I think there's literally, well, three or four points between us and second place. So for us, it's about looking after ourselves, do everything that we can, game plan, stick to that, score some goals, keep, keep clean sheets and... I'm hoping, you know, going into the Christmas break that we'll see ourselves in a different position. Mm, Sam, you've seen Reading a bit this season. Um, what are you expecting for Gemma this weekend? I'm sure she's done her homework as well. I think Reading are quite an organised side. So defensively, they're set up well. Um, I thought they defended well against Everton, considering Everton's attacking prowess. And I think they've got goals coming from different players, the likes of Tash Harding, Emily Eichland, uh, Lauren Bruton came back this season after 16 months out injured, um, another attacking player for them. But I think, like like you said, Gemma, your team have sort of just starting to gain a bit of momentum um, prior to the international break. I'm sure that's given you some confidence. So I, I feel like it's always quite a, a good game between those two sides, actually. They're not too far apart. So, yeah, it'll be exciting. Is it quite nice, Gemma, as well, just to have one down the M4? It's, it's not too bad, is it? Compared to yeah. some of the places you go as well, because uh, how's it working with traveling, COVID and stuff at the moment? Yeah, I mean it's tough. And um, there's been times we've had to travel on the day of the game down to places to play, and that's just just how it is. Kind of got to suck it up and get on with it. There's there's no excuses uh, from our end on that. But yeah, it's tough. Everything is a little bit different. The travel and when you arrive and having two separate changing rooms and. And things like that, it makes it difficult to have team talks and, and things like that, um, just to follow all the guidelines. So, yeah, it's a little bit different, but um, it's the same for everyone. So there's no excuses, really. Just got to get on with it and adapt to this new way of playing football and just be thankful that we're back playing. What was it like with the little COVID sort of, not, not quite an outbreak, was it? But there was a few cases, you know, obviously Tanya had it and um, some of your teammates were having to isolate and housemates and things. So... Was that sort of like, oh gosh, like this is, you know, we all know it's a massive, massive issue, but when it happens sort of to you directly, it really hits home, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, our first experience of it was our game against Aston Villa was cancelled, which obviously we were gutted about, but concerned for the welfare of them. So we just wished them a speedy recovery. And then on the flip side, when it when it hits you as well, so we were travelling to Man City and we had a couple of players then isolating. Um it makes it tough, like, and that's the thing. Everyone's got to be ready and everyone's got to be switched on because because things can happen overnight these days, and and that's the the world we're living in at the minute. But um, like I say, there's no excuses because it's the same for everyone. So you kind of just got to get on with it, stay focused, and and still perform no matter what's going on around you. Uh, Kyla, are you surprised that Manchester United are top of the table at all? They take on Villa, as we said, tomorrow. Um, could put the pressure on everyone else if they get three points there, couldn't they? Yeah, I mean, I think at the beginning of the season, I didn't expect Man United to be top of the table. I mean, they have a crazy talented team, but yeah, they've they've done extremely well. And I think the the players that they brought in have just kind of put them to the top of the top of the league. And yeah, it's it's exciting to see, and also exciting to see like the buzz that the American players have brought over um, with that. So yeah, it will be an interesting game this weekend. Yeah, Sam, um, do, you, do what do you think about Everton v Man City this weekend? Because that's a, a really important game for them trying to chase down, as we can see in the table there. You know, Manchester United and Arsenal, they're the pace setters at the moment, but the two of those want to have a say in it, don't they? And and maybe Manchester City a little bit off where people might have expected, and Everton may be surprisingly above them, but you've got to look at the context of the fixtures so far and things as well. I mean... A really important game, fourth against fifth, so they'll both be looking for three points and, and I don't think anything less in that game. Look at Everton's start to the season, incredible. I think the last few games Everton have played, they've not actually been too happy with their performance. They are missing the likes of Govan, who we know can score goals for them. Mm. And I think Everton will actually sort of be itching to get back to, to play a game and sort of get, get three points. And Manchester City, um, I mean... You just have to look at their squad, but I think I think that'll be a really tight game. Actually, uh, we've mm. seen them play each other in the cup, but Manchester City, I think, will have such high expectations of themselves, um, with especially like you said, with the likes of the US players, Sam Mewis, yeah. Ravel. So it should be an interesting game. 
Uh, Jim, a couple of other games to look at this weekend. Um, Arsenal against Birmingham. Arsenal going really well so far. What do you reckon about this one? Yeah, I think, you know, Birmingham have showed their form and their fight recently and picking up some points and some wins. But on the flip side, you know, Arsenal aren't going to want to lose that. And they're, they're still at the top and they're chasing Man United. They're only a point behind. So I think for them, it'll be staying focused, getting the job done. And they'll be at home. Uh, and I think that means that they'll be allowed some fans as well, which might make a difference. Uh, you get the home advantage back if you're allowed a couple of fans in. Um, so I think that's really exciting for them. And uh, yeah, they won't want to drop points as yeah, I guess yeah. they put themselves as the favourites. Yeah, no fans around us at the moment. Although, because you play at Twerton Park, is that tier three as well? Twerton Park's actually in tier two. Ah, so. Way are... in tier three, so. <laughs> so, so um, are you allowed fans or not then? I believe so. Um, I think we're waiting on a bit of confirmation with it all, mm. but I believe we are because so maybe Wednesday against Villa, you could potentially maybe. potentially. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on behind the scenes to sort that, but yeah, fingers crossed. Hopefully. That's that's a funny situation, that isn't it? Because actually, where the club is is in tier three, but because you play there, it's tier two. Which I mean, I guess the, the fans that are in Bristol can't go, but I, mean, I know that you've got fans around that area. So hopefully you'll get a, a few through the door and you think it make a big difference to you? Yeah, I think, you know, any any home support does make a difference. That's why playing at home is such an advantage because mm. the fans give you that extra lift when you need it, whether that's you winning and you can push on or whether times are tough and you're a bit under it. But you play for the fans and uh, they help massively. So, yeah, I think any home team that's allowed fans now, it will play an advantage again. And it's just exciting to be able to have people back in stadiums. Yeah, sorry to remind you that you had a bit of a tough time against Chelsea um, in September. Uh, but they are playing West Ham this weekend. Since your result, what have you made of how they've been playing and what are you expecting from that game? Um, yeah, goals, goals, goals. I think Chelsea are just, I mean, <laughs> when they played us, they were fantastic. I mean, credit yeah. to them. Obviously, from our point of view, needed to be better. But from their point of view, they were outstanding. I mean, they bring Harder off the bench. They bring Neve Charles off the bench. And they're bringing internationals of that calibre off the bench. It's, it's hard to play against. Um, Fran Kirby was back in and she was she was, had a good game that game. Um, I think Beth England came off the bench as well. So, like, they just have such a, a big squad and a lot of depth in their squad um, that no matter who starts and who plays, you know that they've got quality and they've got goals. And I think on the flip side, West Ham, you know, without the manager at the minute, that could be either a positive or a negative. They might pull together and bounce back or it might be hard and it might be a little bit disorganised. So I think um, that'll be interesting to see. Uh, Sam, really want to get your thoughts on, on the next conversation. You too, Kyla, as well, with the coaching background. All change at Spurs, isn't it, Sam? Yeah, it is. I mean, it was, I was really surprised, actually. I know if you look at the whole picture, you could say, they haven't really been winning games. But for me, uh, Karen Hills and Kwan Amaros have sort of taken that club to the next level. And, you know, there's, there's been so many promotions in between and they've really had to work hard to get them into the top tier. Uh, they've had some injuries. I think they've had some performances you look at and you think they've played well, but the only thing they've lacked is goals sometimes. And then now they've got the likes of Alex Morgan back fit. Um, you know, hopefully they'll have Kit Graham back. We know he's been prolific before in scoring. So it, I would have liked to see them get a bit more time to see what happens. But uh, yeah, it, it's been done now. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what impact Renee Skinner makes now. Yeah, Kyla, do you think she's she's going to have a, a, an impact straight away? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you talk about that new manager bounce, don't you? What do you think will, will happen at the weekend? Because, you know, they could be in a situation where it's all new it's all fresh and you've got to get your head around how she wants you to play or like like we said you could get that bounce and it, it could have the desired impact yeah I think I think like you said on the ladder is that that bounce like you want to prove yourself to a new manager it's kind of like a fresh start for for players that maybe weren't getting a lot of time and and just that extra push um for the individuals but then yeah collectively it, it could be a challenge with new ideas coming in and, and tactics of how you want to play. I don't think she's going to mix things up too much initially, but it'll be interesting to see how it kind of gets plays out. Yeah, brilliant. Well, that's pretty much the WSL covered off there. We want to dip into that, our toe into the championship as well, because um, we see teams come up from the championship and how they cope. We're going to talk about that in a minute, um, but we're going to hear from Crystal Palace's player, 
Uh, Welsh international as well, Theon Morgan, after she played for Wales on Tuesday evening. I love the league. The league is so competitive. So every game for me, I'm testing myself against great players, against Raza, Liverpool. Um, so, yeah, really good league for me to be in as a young player to start competing. And hopefully then we can step by step get to the Super League. For me, I've, I've got targets for myself as a player um, and I really want to get better and better in my game. Um, and then hopefully that will increase my chances of being selected and starting for Wales. Um, so that's the, that's the aim. That's what I want. Playing against Fionn when I was in my, well, not that long ago, a couple of years ago in my late 20s, made me realise that I should not be playing at that level. She was absolutely rapid, lightning quick, so quick, and, and such a great player. And you could just tell she was going to, go on to do great things. She mentioned there Rihanna Roberts, that's who Raza was, um, Liverpool international teammate. Oh, it's weird, isn't it? Liverpool in the Championship, it just feels weird saying that, Sam. Yeah, I mean, it really does. I thought, you know, when everyone was talking about, oh, will Liverpool get relegated? I actually sort of backed them and I thought they'd maybe be able to sort of just turn it around. The latter stages of the season, I think there was a game against Arsenal where it really took Arsenal sort of, um, you know, last minute winner kind of kind of game and, and some of the other results. And you thought maybe just do it. Um, but it's crazy with the resources they have and the the stature of the club for them to be in the championship. Definitely. Well, yeah, absolutely. Gemma, it's important to make sure that the championship is really competitive as well, isn't it? Because the sides need to be able to cope when they come up to the WSL. And, and you know yourself how tough that league is. And I, I mean that with respect as well, because I can see you're starting to pick up momentum. But uh, we look at the championship table. Durham are top. Sheffield United and Leicester are chasing. But you played um, lose the other week in the Continental Cup. Can they survive long term in, in that league? What did you think of their standard? Um, I mean, I guess you got a little look when you played that game, didn't you? And, and the likes of Durham as well. Yeah, I think, you know, the, the jump from the championship to the WSL is definitely less than it was. But I still think it's quite a big jump. Um, I just think it's obviously hard for the championship teams. Not many of them are full-time, so they have to juggle other commitments. They don't get to train full-time and, and kind of revolve their life around performing on a Sunday, which which is what we can do. So I think, um, you know, for to their credit, they have to do it, but with less resources, less planning, less time, um, and we kind of get all day every day if we would like to, to prep for that Sunday. So I do think that's obviously a big difference. Um, and those teams that are making the jump to be in full time, you know, like Leicester, obviously Liverpool are full time in that league. Um, they're, they're showing their quality as well. And I think they're picking up results and there's no um, reason why they're at the top of the table. That kind of explains itself, I think, with the training and the resources that they get. Yeah, let's have a little look at the championship fixtures because we've still got something big that we want to talk about in just a moment. It's something I know Kyle has got a lot, well, hopefully going to have a lot to say in. Um, this is what's happening this weekend in the championship then. We just mentioned Lewis. They're playing Charlton. As Gemma said, uh, all the games on Sunday. London City Lionesses play Coventry. Durham play Blackburn. Uh, Leicester have got London Bees. And Liverpool take on Crystal Palace, which we heard Fionn Morgan talking about just there. So we want to touch on... Scottish football, Kyla, because you've played in, in Scotland and it just this feels tough because there's other football happening, but the domestic Scottish season has been cancelled. Um, tell us more, Kyla, about your thoughts on this. I mean, it's really disappointing, but they, they barely even got to get started this season before games had to be postponed and cancelled and um, so to get even like a rhythm going into the season, it was really, really difficult. So as much as it's a disappointment, I think it's going to be the, for the best interest of of the league in general, so they can kind of hopefully get a fresher start going into to 2021 and, and really plan for the future and have a little bit more stability in their training regimen and their game fixtures and everything going forward. Obviously, it's really disappointing, but I think everyone wants to cancel 2020, so... Um, <laughs> Yeah, right. I don't, I don't think you're far wrong on that. But there is still some Scottish teams in action. 16th of December, it's the Champions League round of 32. Glasgow City are playing Sparta Prague. Now, come on, fill us in. What can we expect from this? I think it's going to be an interesting game. I think they're both in similar situations with like how the league's gone over the past, well, through the pandemic and, and the 
inability to play matches and games and get together. I think actually probably Glasgow City have had more competition and more games to kind of go into the Champions League fixture than Sparta. Um, so they'll have that going for them. And then also Glasgow City have a lot more Champions League experience, I'd say, than Sparta going in there. But um, yeah, I think like matchup wise, they're both very similar teams. I think they have a lot of older players that bring experience and leadership and then these kind of like young players that are coming in that are exciting to watch and play. So it's it's going to be interesting that way. And I'm curious to see who's going to take it in the end. Yeah, looking forward to that one. Gemma, when we talk about the Champions League, is that like an aspiration for you? Because, of course, senior international duty, I know, is must well, it must be an aspiration, but that as well, you know, it's the pinnacle, isn't it, the Champions League? Yeah, definitely. I think you touched on it there. Obviously, the inspiration is always to represent your country at the highest level. And then outside of that, the Champions League is the next best thing. Um, so, yeah, definitely. It's definitely um, somewhere I want to be playing. I want to play in the Champions League one day. I want to win the Champions League one day. And when you see the likes of, you know, Lucy Bronze doing that and, and Alex Greenwood and coming back with those trophies, it's it's amazing. It's great to see, you know, English players doing that um, all over and seeing English teams compete in it as well um, and getting further and further every year. Yeah, what's the aspirations for the for the rest of the season then? Is it in the nicest way to stay up? Yeah, of course. I mean, we're you know we're we're not stupid. We know we sit at the bottom of the table, and that's that is what it is at the minute. Um, but we've got a nice run of games coming up. We know we've got places we can pick up points now, and I think we had a tough start. I think yeah, we conceded a lot of goals where we maybe shouldn't have. Um, but at the end of the day, we've played some top top teams, and and they prove themselves week in week out. We've had Arsenal, Chelsea, Man City, Everton. You know, that run of games, um, we were slightly disappointed with the Birmingham game. And then we got a point out of Tottenham. So I think now we can start to push on these next three games, Reading, West Ham, Villa, and then Man United before the break. Uh, definitely. So on the team point, yeah, of course, we want to stay up. And for me, just want to keep performing, keep getting minutes uh, week in, week out and, and keep pushing on. And Sam, where are you this weekend? Because last time we did a show, I can't remember if it was before or after, you've been at two games in one day, which is insane. Yeah, that was that was women's football weekend. So I was at three games, but this weekend it's just the one. It's uh, Arsenal against Birmingham. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that because I think Birmingham. That like every time I've watched them, they just show so much resilience. And then with the attacking players that Arsenal have, they're just always looking to score goals. But Birmingham are quite defensively organised, and they've got. Uh, players really inform the likes of Claudia Walker. So I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to it. And it's up the road from me, so not far to go either. Always the best ones. And Kyla, just before we go, I just wanted you to sort of tell everyone what you're up to with your coaching now and the organisation you work for and how things are coming along with COVID. Because hopefully, all being well, you've got a pretty cool first well, first destination back in mind, haven't you? I mean, I'm not jealous at all. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm. It's since we last talked, it's really weird. Like, I've retired from professional football and taken a full time job with coaches across continents, which is really such an incredible organization to be a part of. So, we kind of we work on a global scale and we work through sport for development. So, it's it's different from elite coaching. It's definitely like using sport to facilitate conversations about social issues. Uh, so it's totally different realm, but I'm really excited to get back on field because it looks like our first on field session will be back in Zanzibar. So if any of you haven't been, you need to go. It's gorgeous. Last I'm time sure. I went scuba diving and it was amazing. <laughs> More like on the beach. You're probably just playing football on the beach, aren't you? <laughs> uh, we did a little bit of that. We did a little bit of that. And then we were inland and like working with the kids and stuff. So, wow. um, but it's, it's a beautiful place, beautiful people, um, a lot of culture. So definitely, hopefully we'll be back on field with that soon. Yeah, absolutely. It's nice to end on a positive note as well. You know, hopefully we've got this vaccine sorted in the next few months or so. And maybe just maybe next year at some point we'll get back to some sort of normality. Your normality is Zanzibar. That's not my normality, but that's pretty cool. <laughs> so it's <laughs> pretty great. Oh, um, ladies, that's been amazing. Thank you so much. That's absolutely flying by. Uh, Gemma, best of luck this weekend against Reading. And uh, we'll be watching out. Maybe get another goal. And uh, Kylie, great to speak to you and, and good luck with your trip, hopefully to Zanzibar next year. And Sam, enjoy your game this weekend. Um, and thank you for watching. It's been great to be here again. If you want to get in touch, our Twitter and Insta are right there. Just go to at Proper Ballers and find us on Facebook. All you've got to do is search for Proper Ballers. Thanks for watching. <laughs>